How's it going Chip Tribe? It's me Chips back with yet another installment of the Chip Tide Show. Today we're talking about a game that honestly shouldn't exist but I'm so glad it does. It's the most ambitious crossover in gaming history, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Sounds weird, I know, I know, but it's actually pretty tight. So let's not dilly dally anymore. Hit that intro, Richard. So, as always, if you've never played this game, have no fear, for I will give you all some background information. It was released for the Switch back in 2017, making it actually one of the first games released for the console. As you could probably tell by the name, this game features everyone's favorite plumber and Nintendo icon, Mario, as he teams up with... The Rabbids? When it was announced, most people had one of two reactions. They either thought, why, or... Oh yeah, I forgot the rabbits were a thing, followed by, why? By all accounts, this game should not be good. Teaming the poster boy of Nintendo and arguably video games in general with this band of annoying OG minions that are tolerable at their best should have been a mess. And yet, somehow, some way, this is actually one of my favorite games in recent memory. How this is possible, I'm still not completely sure. but. It's something I plan to figure out by the end of this episode. But to do this, I'm going to have to enlist the help of a little something I like to call the WitGG! Or the Why Is This Game Good equation. Yes, you must pronounce it that way. Stick with me. Okay, so our first two variables in this equation are actually pretty easy to figure out. It's right in the freaking title. You got Mario, and you got your rabbits. Add them together. Bam. But as I already said, these two on their own should not result in a good game, so obviously we need some more variables. Hmm, but uh, where to start? Alright, alright, how about this? What type of gameplay would you imagine a game like this having? Platforming would be a good guess. Or maybe whatever kind of game the Rabs are usually in. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know a whole lot about these guys, but regardless, it's not that either. Nope, instead, it's a turn-based tactical strategy game. Alright, uh, throw that in the equation I guess, but clearly we're still missing something. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention the fact that everybody in this game fights with guns? Because the first thing I think when I see these guys is, huh, I can use some more firearms. Yeah, they're cartoony guns, but it's still weird. So, as it stands, we have four variables in our with GG! But, there's no way that these four things combined can result in such a good game. Why? I'm glad you asked. Take a gander at this handy chart I've made. Each of these circles represents one of our variables so far. Do you know what kind of chart this is? It's a freaking Venn diagram. These four things have literally nothing in common. So why do they combine result in a game that is any way coherent, let alone actually really good? There's gotta be something else we're missing, but what could it be? Well, I guess to figure it out, we need to start from the beginning. The game starts off in presumably the real world, in the room of a girl with a great taste in decoration, because it's decorated floor to ceiling with all things Mario. She also happens to be a genius inventor on par with the likes of Tony Stark. Her most recent invention is a kind of AR headset equipped with a highly advanced AI called Beepo that has the ability to fuse any two items together. Yeah, it gets weirder. The girl gets called away to do something and just when she leaves, a time and dimension traveling washing machine filled with rabbits pops into the room. No, you didn't mishear me. It's pretty crazy. Where did they come from? How did they get there? I have no idea because it's never explained. Instead, the rabbits come pouring out of the machine like it's one of those weird clown cars and start wreaking havoc, as they do. 
One of them gets their hand on Beepo and starts firing it at random, fusing his fellow rabbits with all of the Mario memorabilia, all while laughing like it's the funniest thing in the world. Remember all these guys, because they're important later on. Then, they all get sucked back into the washing machine and vanish once again. Not weird enough for you yet? Could, because it gets weirder. When they reappear, they find themselves in the real Mushroom Kingdom, right in the middle of some statue unveiling ceremony. Except this time, the trip doesn't go so smoothly. The washing machine starts breaking down and transforms into a wormhole that sucks Mario and Co. into it before spitting everything back out into a new version of the Mushroom Kingdom that now seems to have a fair bit of rabbit influence. Basically, it's really a mess now. Still not weird enough for you yet? Man, you're pretty hard to please, but luckily, this game's got you covered. So you remember Beepo, right? Well, apparently, at some point during this whole ordeal, the AI component was somehow separated from the fusing headset, manifesting in this hovering Roomba thing. The rabbit who first grabbed Beepo somehow gets the goggles fused to his face, loses control, and starts fusing the remaining rabbits with all the junk around them. From there, Mario crashes into the ground and comes face to face with Beepo, as well as two rabbits who have been fused with Peach and Luigi costumes back in the bedroom, and are simply called Rabbit Peach and Rabbit Luigi, respectively. And, believe it or not, I think that's everything. Beepo, Mario, Rabbit Peach, and Rabbit Luigi set off to explore the new Mushroom Kingdom in order to fix the washing machine and put everything back to normal. Oh yeah. And all this is explained in like a five minute cutscene with barely any dialogue. Now, I totally get it if you think this is way too complicated for a game like this, but it somehow just works. It's the perfect amount of silly and enjoyable, all while doing a good job of setting up the world you're going to be exploring. But is the weird yet charming story the reason this game is so good? No, not really, but let's throw it into our equation anyway. So, earlier I said this game was like a tactical turn-based strategy game, and while that is true and we'll get to that in a bit, that's not the only gameplay this game has to offer. While making your way through the overworld, you run into a lot of puzzles along the way. These aren't your average video game overworld puzzles that you can solve in about 10 seconds. They're actually super clever and decently challenging. You've got all the classics in here, from pushing blocks to sliding blocks, switches, moving pipes and platforms, the works. I was genuinely caught off guard by the level of polish on these puzzles, and they're super satisfying to figure out. Most of them aren't too hard if you're just looking to progress, but if you tinker around with them a bit more, you can usually find some secret chests and stuff. I swear, if this game was just a cool puzzle game, I probably still would have loved it. And yet, this is somehow only a side feature to the main gameplay, the battles. I guess that's just another variable to throw into our WitGG! The fights in this game are the epitome of easy to learn, hard to master. You get to control three characters as you fight your way through waves of crazed rabbits. The battlefields are laid out in large grids filled with all sorts of barriers, pipes, and other things that make every battle unique. When it's your turn, you have a lot of options. Every character can move a certain number of spaces, attack with their primary or secondary weapon, and use one of their special abilities. You can do this with all of your characters in any order. That seems pretty standard until you realize what that fully entails. You could, say, move with Mario to slide tackle one guy, come back, leap off Rabbit Peach, and land on another guy to deal some extra damage. Then, you could switch to Rabbit Luigi, shoot a guy, use one of his special abilities, switch back to Mario, shoot another guy, then go to Rabbit Peach, and, well, you get it. The sheer number of things you can do on a single turn is kind of crazy. But while this may seem like it's super OP it would make the game too easy, you have to remember that your opponents can do the same thing. On top of that, there are all sorts of different enemy types that require very different strategies to take down. And on top of that, not every battle boils down to kill all the enemies. Sometimes you need to do it in a certain number of turns, or you have to kill a certain number of infinitely spawning rabbits, and sometimes you don't have to kill any at all. 
you just have to rush to a safe zone on the other side of the field, escort my boy Toad safely through the battlefield, or collect parts from the washing machine that are scattered throughout the field. And yet other times you have to take on a boss or mini boss, all of which fight super differently and have very specific weaknesses that you have to figure out how to exploit. And side note, the World 3 final boss is the best boss fight I have ever done in anything ever. I won't spoil why, but if you've played the game, you know what I'm talking about. But boss fight or not, battles in this game are some of the best I've ever played. Every fight is different and presents a new challenge to you, which keeps the game from getting stale. In the beginning, the battles aren't too bad and you can just kind of get away with powering your way through. But the enemies get smart quick and pretty soon you'll find that if you don't plan your turns carefully, you're gonna get bopped. But luckily for me, and unlucky for my enemies, as the game went on, I became a strategy master and started pulling up all sorts of crazy combos that made me feel like a freaking Jedi, and it was awesome. Another thing that adds to the strategy element of the battles is the roster of fighters you have to choose from. There are eight in total, Mario, Luigi, Peach, Yoshi, and their rabid counterparts. All eight of them fight very differently, but my personal favorites are the three you start off with. First up is Mario, because, well, first of all, you can't take him off the team. But second, because he's able to cover a decent amount of ground, does solid damage with his regular gun, and can really take people out with his secondary hammer if he gets up close. All the Mario characters also have a special ability that they can use every few turns called Hero Sight, which allows them to shoot an enemy that crosses their line of sight on the opponent's turn, which is obviously a really good. Rabid Peach is a solid tank and healer and can really mess up foes by sending out her little scout robot bomb thing, but that's not the main reason I like her, but we'll get back to that. And then there's Rabid Luigi, who starts off not all that great, but once you unlock his vampire abilities and dummy strong dash attacks, he becomes probably the best character in the game, able to simultaneously dish out a ton of damage and heal himself in the process. I think this video is going to be too long already without me going through the other five fighters, but rest assured they are all cool and have their own utility, and you can change up your party anytime you want between battles, so you may have to use a specific character in order to help take down a particularly tricky fight. Another way you can customize the way you fight is through the way you upgrade your characters. Everyone has a skill tree that you can invest in using these power orbs you get from beating battles, where you can do all sorts of things like increase their health or area of movement, or you can unlock new special abilities for them. And then there's the weapons. You can find new ones from the chests I mentioned earlier, and each weapon has its own special effect like having a chance to make an opponent move or bounce out of their position, or sticking to the spot with honey. There's a crazy amount of depth in all of this for a game that brings together two franchises nobody really wanted to see come together in the first place. So is the battle system finally the variable that explains why this game is so good? In large part yes I think so. but. We're still not done yet, because I haven't touched on another one of my favorite parts of this game, the humor. There's not a lot of dialogue in the game. The only character who really talks a lot is Beepo, who maintains as a kind of all business, no nonsense kind of figure, who just wants to fix the washing machine and get back home, but has to put up with all the rabbit shenanigans before they do that. But let's talk about the rabbits, shall we? Now, most of the time these guys are obnoxious and tolerable at best, but not really funny for anyone over the age of 10. No offense if you find the rabbits funny, it's all good, but in this, I found myself laughing out loud several times at the crazy things they get up to. Like the ones you can observe just sort of hanging out in the overworld. Sometimes they're getting into a finger gun duel, sometimes they're reenacting Shakespeare, dumb stuff like that. Sounds silly but most of it was genuinely funny. I feel like this was the perfect role for these guys. Not putting too much focus, just kinda hanging out and doing funny stuff in the background. But then there's the team members. The Mushroom Kingdom game are all funny enough, 
and the Rabbids managed to walk a fine line between slapstick and real comedy. But the real crown jewel of them all, pun intended, is Rabbit Peach. She somehow managed to act like a stereotypical white girl obsessed with her phone and a crazy and sloppy rabbit all at the same time. And it's so freaking funny. She might even come close to my favorite video game character, period. Don't worry, Captain Toad, you still top the list. But you better watch yourself, because you got some competition. I know I said this before, but I really don't know how else to explain it. You just have to experience it for yourself. Maybe that's my main problem. I can't pinpoint the exact variable responsible for this game's greatness. There's just something about it that I really love. But then, maybe that's just it. There's not just one thing about this game that makes it great. It's a collection of great gameplay, a funny and enjoyable story, and a cool world that all comes together to be greater than some of its parts. Oh yeah, and did I mention the music was written by Grant Kirkhope, the same guy who did Banjo-Kazooie, along with a slew of other great games? So yeah, goes without saying, the music doesn't disappoint. I think the best way to demonstrate how much I enjoyed this game is with a little anecdote. When I first finished this game, it was like midnight on a school night, and I was having so much fun that instead of going to bed, I immediately turned around, bought the game's Donkey Kong inspired DLC, and started playing it again. And you know what? I think I'm going to follow in my past self's footsteps. Don't pack up just yet, Richard. Run that intro back, because we're hopping right back in. All in all, this DLC is just more of the great stuff from the base game, but somehow even better. The battles are better, the puzzles are better, the tropical setting is super cool, and somehow it's even funnier. The dynamic between the oblivious Donkey Kong, Rabbit Cranky, and his, well, crankiness, and of course, Rabbit Peach steals the show. From freaking out when she loses service, to using Cranky's cane as a selfie stick, to this weird romance angle she has with Rabbit Kong, she's comedic gold, and I had a smile on my face the entire time. And you know what? I figured it out. I've solved the why is this game good equation. The whole time, I've been overcomplicating it with all these variables and whatnot, when in reality, there should be only one variable. Is the game fun? Did you enjoy yourself while playing it? then it's good. That's all there is to it. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle and its DLC might be a really weird crossover that nobody asked for, but it's easily one of the most fun games on the Switch, in my opinion at least, and if you haven't played it, I cannot recommend it enough. Man, I think this was the smoothest episode of the show yet. No getting stranded in space, no one on one guests, no cliffhanger endings. You know what? Maybe I am getting better at this after all. Or, um, uh, we're getting better. Sorry, Richard. Although, let's be honest, you didn't really have much to do this episode. I mean, I'm not saying that's the reason it went so smoothly is because you weren't involved much. But I'm not not saying that either. Huh. I'm not really sure how to end this, so, uh, let's just head to that outro. Hey guys, thanks so much for sticking around to the end of the yet another episode of the Chip Tide Show. If you like what you saw and want to see more, there's a playlist in the description of all the episodes I've done so far. Also, consider subscribing so you can get notified when the next episode comes out. If you'd like, leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of this game, this episode, or anything really. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Chip Tide so you can stay up to date on everything that's been going on with me. Make sure you stay tuned in about three weeks for the next episode, when it should be out, and I will see you then. But until then, don't forget to take it easy.